What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Wednesday, July 10th, 2019. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the busiest lady in the business, Andrea Renee. What's good, Greg? I'll tell you what's good, of course. Twitch.tv slash Gary Witta. It all went down last night. It did. A round of applause for Gary Witta, everybody. Good job, Gary. Started job, streaming, Gary. getting ready Woo! to do his uh, Book of Eli watch along. He did it last night. Got on the front page of Twitch, did 3,500 uh, concurrence. Was what? very excited. What? Yeah, that's I know, good, right? That's, that's, that's pretty good. They that's featured him on the Starcraft. homepage, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what did it. That's what spiked his numbers. And when they took it away, crashed. That's when I was like, I'm not watching this just loser anymore. Just seven people watching. Back, exactly. <laughs> Back to these people just want to know about Rogue One. Um, games are good too, Andrea. We went and saw a game yesterday we can't talk about. Tomorrow we'll, we'll, we'll be able to talk about it. we can say that we played it. Well, I can't say what I said about it or what I think of it, though. No, but we, if you checked my Instagram stories yesterday, I had a little video of this giant warship that we were on, the USS Hornet, mm -hmm. that's based here in the San Francisco Bay Area out of the Oakland side of the port there. Um, massive museum inside that ship, and of course, also reminiscent of the setting of the Dark Pictures Man of Madan. Is that what she said yesterday? I kept saying Madan, but apparently I kept saying Madan too, and then they were like Madan, and I was like, I don't know what they said. The, the, the next game from Supermassive, the folks behind Until Dawn. Yeah, yeah. we can talk about it tomorrow in the game. Games cast, so we will. But that's that show. This show is not that show. This show is about the news. And right now, what are we going to talk about? The Nintendo Switch Lite, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa! It's all Whoa! you wanted to talk about oh, in the yeah, mailbag. It's, it's all we're going to talk about today because this is kind of funny. Games Daily, each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show. Patreon.com/slash Kind of Funny Games with your questions, comments, concerns, everything else under the video game sun. Then tune in to Twitch.tv/slash Kind of Funny Games. Watch us record the show live if you're watching live you have a special job go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games roosterteeth.com and listening on podcast services around the globe housekeeping for you today thank you to our patreon producers colton yoder blackjack and mohammed mohammed um there's one that I've been meaning to add in July, and then it's been a crazy July, so I'm making sure it still works, and I have it right. Mm -hmm. If you go to kindoffunny.com slash Lego, you oh, can go and vote and support to make the Lego Podcast Studio product idea submitted by Kebabs, right, Kevin? Yep. Thank you very much. Uh, that is based on the Kind of Funny set. He did this like last year. We are 20 days left. We needed to get to a certain amount of people that I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll have like more like information on this later. You, but we're not there yet. Yeah, you have to register on the Lego side, but it's super easy. Takes two seconds. Yeah. Kind of Funny best friends, go to kindoffunny.com slash Lego. Support our Kind of Funny set being an official Lego thing. Uh, Please, God, make this happen. Please. It's all Kevin's ever wanted. Actually, Kevin wants a lot of things, but... That's what? Uh, uh, thank you. Today, we're brought to you by Hims, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> for some news. Four items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen. Andrea, <laughs> number one, of course, is the news that we all went, 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 went into this morning. The Nintendo Switch Lite. And there's a Pokemon edition, but we'll get to that later. In a video today, Nintendo introduced Nintendo Switch Lite, a device designed specifically to place Nintendo Switch games in handheld mode. The Nintendo Switch Lite system launches September 20th at a suggested retail price of $199.99. That's $200 pretty much. And will be available in three different colors, yellow, gray, and turquoise. Nintendo Switch Lite has integrated controls and is smaller than the flagship version of the Nintendo Switch. It has no kickstand and, as a dedicated handheld gaming device, does not support video output to a TV. Therefore, it does not come with a dock or HDMI cable. The new device can play all games in the robust Nintendo Switch library that support handheld mode, although some games will have restrictions. Compatible game modes will, compatible game modes will be listed on the back of the game packaging and in the Nintendo eShop. For games that support tabletop mode, players can, can wirelessly connect Joy-Con controllers sold separately to Nintendo Switch Lite. In these cases, users need to have a device to recharge Nintendo Joy-Con controllers, such as the Joy-Con charging grip. So again, you can't slide on or off your controllers here. you got to have this separate. Here's some of the, the base facts for you. The original Nintendo Switch, of course, is 4 inches high and 9.4 inches long. The Nintendo Switch Lite is 3.6 inches high and 8.2 inches long. The original Nintendo Switch touchscreen was 6.2 inches. The Lite is 5.5. Uh, the original Switch smaller? Yep. 
Yeah, well, this what? is a dedicated handheld, Andrea Renee. So what? The Keep going, Greg. The original Switch battery uh, approximately is 2.5 hours to 6.5 hours. Uh, the <laughs> Nintendo Switch Lite is approximately 3 to 7 hours. So the same. So enjoy that 0. 0.5 of extra battery life. <laughs> uh, there is no rumble in these Joy-Cons or anything like that. There is no IR motion. There's no little sensor at the bottom. Uh, it does, however, have a real D-pad, which nice. people are super stoked about. Uh, uh, don't expect that to come to the Joy-Cons, though, anytime soon. CNET had a quote from one Doug Bowser. Uh, here's the whole statement, though. There's also a new true D-pad on the left side, replacing a set of four buttons on the Switch's Joy-Con that offered the same functions. Uh, it looks like a better option for playing NES-type retro games, but according to Bowser, don't expect D-pad on future Joy-Cons. Quote, there are no plans or nothing to announce in terms of further variation of the Joy-Con. On top of all that, a special Pokemon-themed version of the newly announced Nintendo Switch Lite system will be available in North America starting November 8th. The Nintendo Switch Lite... Zakian and Zamazenta edition no, features no, stylish no. cyan and magenta <laughs> buttons and illustrations of the two new legendary Pokemon from the upcoming Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield games for Nintendo Switch. This unique system will be available at a suggested retail price of $199.99 while supplies last. Andrea, you added in this one that I think we're just piling all the Switch Lite stuff together so we can then talk about it. Nintendo says the Switch Lite isn't going to replace the 3DS. This is from The Verge. God fucking damn it. What happened now, Kevin? I just want them to stop with the 3DS. It's not. I stop! mean, this is, it's pretty just much stop! over. Even though they're saying it's not over, it's over. You might think that I. Do you remember who wrote this from The Verge? Um, I have it right here. One second, please. You, you, oh, well, I'm going to read it. You can tell us later. Okay. You might think that a handheld only Switch would mark the death knell of the Nintendo 3DS, but Nintendo doesn't necessarily see it that way. The company says that it isn't ending support for the 3DS line of systems, despite the emergence of the Switch Lite. Quote, we'll continue to support our 3DS family of systems as long as there is demand, says Nintendo of America president Doug Bowser. Uh, the release lineup for the 3DS certainly has dried up as of late. At E3, there wasn't a single 3DS on display. Even the vulnerable Pokemon series has moved on to the Switch with the upcoming Sword and Shield. That said, there's at least one good reason for Nintendo to keep the aging handheld around. The Switch Lite is $100 cheaper than the base hardware, at $199.99, which is the same price as the highest end 3DS. But the entry level 2DS is just $79.99, an ideal price point for kids and families. Until the Switch price tag hovers around that magical $100 mark, Nintendo will likely keep that 3DS around. That's from Andrew Webster. Thank you, Andrew Webster. Also important to note, I'm not sure if I missed this, there is no kickstand in the Switch Lite either. It's on there. It was in there. Yeah, there's okay. a lot of information I just threw at you that we're about to dissect it all, but that, you know, we're there. Uh, then you put this, Echo Thunderbolt on Twitter added, in the past year, the 3DS has gotten exclusively a new WarioWare collection, a Luigi's Mansion remaster, a Bowser's Inside Story remaster, plus new story, a Kirby's Epic Yarn remaster, and Persona 2, or Persona Q2. The reason I added that in from at Echo Thunderbolt is because some people may be asking, like, Kevin... Why is the 3DS still a thing? And Nintendo is obviously supporting it globally because there are, you know, tens of millions of them around the world. And so they are continuing to do software. But I'm also in the camp of maybe it's time to sunset the 3DS and I go all in on the Switch. I do. And I think the E3 statement of it not being there is that. Yeah, we're still supporting it. It's still there. We're still manufacturing. If you're still buying them, we're still making them. There's a vast library of 3DS games for you to go play, but we're not really going to get out in the way of anything. Right. Uh, more importantly, Andrea Renee, mm -hmm. Nintendo Switch Lite, where do you come down on it? I think that this is a fantastic hardware offering. I am incredibly confused why they wouldn't use the massive stage of E3 to not showcase this new piece of hardware because it was mere weeks ago um, that we were all, you know, in Los Angeles celebrating video games and Nintendo, while they had a fantastic software showing with, you know, Pokemon and Animal Crossing and they announced, you know, the Breath of the Wild sequel, I think they could have had, they could have easily stole the show if they had brought this hardware to E3. I'm, I'm just a little confused why they waited a couple weeks afterwards. BJ Bernardo was confused too and wrote into <laughs> patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says, why didn't Nintendo announce this at their E3 Direct? This sounds like a thing you'd want to announce at E3 and Microsoft or Sony would not miss an opportunity to announce new hardware at E3, right? Well, Sony didn't announce their hardware at E3, so slam a jam on you. That's what I'm saying slam right there. Slam a jam! Yeah, they both, I mean, announcing the hardware, I mean, could could have happened, you know, a couple of weeks before, um, but like being able to like 
put it into people's hands sure. because it's coming out sure. in just a couple of months. Yeah, you know, September, September 20th, not far off. Um, so I suspect that we'll see this at uh, potentially at Comic-Con next week. Oh, interesting. Because um, Nintendo usually does usually a big showcase room, yeah. at, at Comic-Con Worth in San pointing Diego. Out, not that this means jack shit, but I haven't been contacted about the usual, hey, come over to the mm-hmm. Nintendo uh, hotel lobby area we're doing the thing at and do that stuff. Well, we'll get it at uh, uh, PAX West for sure and probably at Gamescom mm-hmm. in, in Germany as well. But... I mean, this is something that I predicted a long time ago. Of course, they're going to do something like this. Absolutely, they need to address that younger audience. They need to address families that have multiple children that can't afford the full price switch. Having something that's exclusively portable is great. You know, we talked all the time about, yes, ditch the rumble. No, the Joy-Cons don't need to slide off. I mean, I think this is great. I think this is, uh, they're releasing it at the perfect time. I had when we talked about our guesses for when something like this would happen. I said Pokemon Sword and Shield out in the fall it would be a perfect time to launch a new piece of hardware. Bam! Now they have a Pokemon Sword and Shield edition. This is great. Boars and Double Zero writes into patreoncom slash games. Says good morning, Greg and Andrea. The Nintendo Switch Lite is real, and I have just one question: Is this a Pokemon machine that prints money? The DS Lite was released before Pokemon on DS, and the DS Lite is also known to print money due to its crazy sales history that helped the D. Blah, blah, blah. Did Nintendo make a console just to cater to all the Poke freaks out there? Uh, thanks for everything you do and keep up the amazing work. Yes. Of course they did. Yeah. In one word. Is that yes. surprising at all? I think that that's. I've been surprised at the amount. Like, first off, love you guys all. You're all right in with amazing questions. Today, the mailbag, as I said, inundated with Nintendo Switch Lite thing. And so many people. Who is this for? Wonder why are they doing it this way? And I was like, we've lived through the 2DS, didn't we? Where we were like, well, like uh, you, this is what Nintendo does. This is a machine for people who are just going to pick it up for Pokemon. A machine that are, is that, hey, I have a nice Switch that I love. My kids want their own, but they got grubby little mitts, and they're going to break stuff, and they're going to lose Joy Cons, and they're going to here. You guys go. Here's your cheaper Switch, cheaper with quotes, you know, that you can fuck up and scuff up and have in the back of the car and not worry about getting kicked around and losing part something mm-hmm. critical to it. I thought it was. I think it's pretty obvious who the system's for. Is it's for yeah that absolutely. Absolutely. I think that they know that their market includes uh, a lot of people who buy multiples of their systems. And so they're kind of teeing it up to say, hey, we're going to make Switch Lite, you know, the companion um, console to the Nintendo Switch. And I think that that's really, really genius. The thing that I really want them to nail, which I think will just skyrocket the Switch Lite success, is cloud saves. If they can get a handle on people being able to take their data with them, then I think we'll be okay. And right now, we know there was just a little bit of controversy around the Nintendo online service and how if you stop your service, then you lose your cloud saves and and Mm. all of that. So I think if they can get a really consistent way for people to bring their data between the systems, then I think we'll, we'll right be now. If you have the cloud, I mean, if you have a Nintendo online, you have cloud saves for your system. Right. Are you familiar with bringing your profile to another one? You know, like having two switches working. I've never attempted. Gary Wood and his wife Leah, who made the shirt, showed up today to give me the shirt and say, "Hey, and they gave me iced coffee too. They're just buttering me up to wear the shirt and promote the, the brand." And it worked. Thanks, Gary. Ah. Uh, Thanks for bringing me one, Gary. He didn't know you were on today. You know, he mm-hmm. quit Widow Wednesday because he was going to be so hungover from his party success. Loss. Anyways, um. They asked me that question. I'm like, I know that when Nintendo Switch uh, Online arrived and it had the cloud saves, that it was. I know people are saying you can, but I'm not. I don't. I haven't done it to know the ins and outs of it to know how easy it is. I googled uh, right while we were talking. Right, the Verge's article, but the Ver- the Verge article here written by uh, Damien Lee is from September 19th, 2018. Kind of funny. slash you're wrong if you can explain. It just in nuts and bolts how easy it is to go between two switches with your profile. Nintendo Switch Online yesterday, which uh, uh, with it came the ability to play your download Nintendo Switch games on multiple devices. The subscription service, blah, 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 adds an overdue feature like cloud saves, which have long available. It's not perfect, which is what I thought, as it's been reported that online data could be lost immediately if subscriptions last, which is what you were just talking about. Correct. But it's still a step up from uh, having your games on, tied to one switch. Previously, the process of transferring digital games to, to other consoles was way more difficult than it needed to be. Users had to manually deactivate their Nintendo accounts from the settings first and they didn't have access to their Switch devices they had to contact customer support uh There are a lot of uh, conditions you have to meet before being able to play on another device, which is explained further on the website. Basically, Nintendo labels the Switch device you assign to your Nintendo account as your primary console. You can then 
use your Nintendo account to log into a secondary console, but it must be connected to the internet when you're playing, and the game can't be played at the same time on the primary console. That's standard, If, if yeah. you decide you want to start playing again on your primary console, this will pause the game on your secondary console. So yeah, that sounds exactly how we're, or not exactly, but pretty much exactly Well, I mean, PlayStation system is a little bit more forgiving because... If I, it's my primary console, I can play I offline. I could log in on another one and, and download it yeah. and play it while you're playing on my primary console. Okay. If you have multiple switches in your house, it might be a good idea to look at this feature. Here's the how to. So yeah, okay. This so it is. It's just I just haven't fucked around with it. It does sound like it's intuitive. My main thing, and I don't even know. Nintendo. This is stretching both of our knowledge of the Nintendo Online. Kind of funny. dot com slash you're wrong. It automatically backs up my cloud saves, right? It's like Xbox is in terms of doing it. Because whenever I pop I have in, no idea. Whenever I pop in to manage software, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna delete this game. I better back up. It's always like your cloud. It's already backed up. So I assume it's doing it. I don't know when it's doing. It's like an it. archiving system, right? Yeah, I think so. that's what I've that's what I've gotten just by seeing it. So yeah, okay. I think that this is a great announcement. I want a purple one. Make a purple one, Nintendo, Here and I go. will buy it because I don't need it. Because that's the that? thing I do. What did you? <laughs> <laughs> that was the, that's been the conversation on the internet. Like yes. I saw Tana talking about it. Like I don't need this. Why do I want it? But blah, blah, blah. Jen this morning was like, so I'm like, are we getting it? Because Jen, it, hers is a Stardew Valley machine, and yeah. she sits on the couch and plays it while I play something else. Sometimes you know I've been playing uh, Moonlighter on the uh, TV while she plays over there. It's been, I there it definitely is an audience for this, and it's an interesting thing where I also saw people being, oh my god, like. This, the, since you can't detach the Joy Cons, you can't play certain games, and it's gonna do this, that, and the, and it's like, like they put one two switch in the video where they're like, this is you know one two switch, you don't have the, and it's like, yeah, who the, the big fuck one everyone's cares? talking about is Mario Party and how you can't play Mario Party on your uh, Switch Lite, and I think that the, unless you got the Joy Cons, right? Um, if you have additional yeah, Joy Cons, yeah, if you have the additional Joy Cons, yeah, correct. Yeah. Uh, I mean, most people have more than just two Joy Cons. At least the people that I know that own Switch have at least four. Some have six or eight. Yeah. Um, the thing. I think that um, another issue that people are talking about is that Nintendo hasn't clearly labeled on their games which ones are able to be played on Switch Lite and which ones are not. And I think that list of games that are not able to be played on Switch Lite out of the box is not as large as people think it is, but it's still something that Nintendo needs to clearly communicate with their consumers to make sure that people aren't buying the software thinking that they can play it on their device, particularly in the eShop, where, yeah, that know, was. I saw some. I saw r- initial reporting being like, "Yeah, okay, the boxes are clear, but eShop is not in terms of what's a handheld mode game or what is." Right, and I would hope that they would be able to build something in in the eShop that their backend software can recognize when you, as a user, are in the eShop on a light mm. and say, like, give like a warning. Dude, I wish, but I do not. I you don't do not think believe, Nintendo- I do not believe that'll be a thing. I. I I yeah. think it should be. I think it'd be all I think definitely that'd be a radical move that deserves to be there. I don't think they're gonna be able to. I don't think they're gonna I do think it. The, te- the technology exists, whether or not they implement it yeah. is another thing. hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely something that could happen. Um I wanna go over to Alec from Minnesota. Alec from Minnesota wrote in with, with a giant diatribe basically being what I was talking about. One of the people I just don't know who this is for. I think we've answered it. Uh, uh, Kevin, are you excited about this? Does it make sense to you? Um no I mean like I don't want this. Sure. But yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, cool. Just making sure. I want to make sure that me and Andrew aren't over here just you know hypothesizing and spitballing at you. Uh, I wasn't listening to anything. You guys well, said. I, you're, one of the, you're like what I like to call a normie. You know what I mean? I like. You understand in, how video I games walked, work? I walked in and out. Troy Baker walked in one time. He gave him a bag of garbage. He said, "Here you go, garbage man." You don't even know who he was. You know? It's true. I didn't know who he was. You didn't know who Troy Baker was? <laughs> Why would I know who Troy? Because his photo is? was all over the office. Uh, after he came by, those photos we took here. That's not true. That's clearly no, yeah, that's clearly his First off, that's a really low res. Headshot. Low res. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways, Alec had a question goes like this. Uh, my second question, though, because he was asking like, "Who is this for?" We've already covered that, I think. Is how well do you think the Switch Lite will sell? Do you think there will be a big enough audience for this to do well, or do you think it'll flop? <laughs> Thanks for your time, and I had a blast meeting you all at RTX. Andrea, is this gonna flop? Hell no. God no. Not this a is chance. gonna sell gangbusters. Are you kidding me? This is gonna be a hot Christmas item. Yeah. And I think it's it's definitely going to be that thing where I personally am so weird about my Switch and I love it so goddamn much that I can't imagine. I would never. I I do the thing where I travel with it and I and I want to get to that later. Where but there's big games where I will bring the dock for it and then but 90% of the time on a travel trip I'm playing it uh, in handheld mode. So I but I know that our friends who travel as much as we do, there's definitely people who are like, cool, I'm buying one of these just for my mm-hmm. travel switch, and that's how I'm gonna use it and have the two and then your other one will never 
will be the doc, let alone the people who are, oh, cool, now I can get it for my kids and they can fuck it up. Because I tell you what, I, I'm at that age where a lot of my friends have kids that are old enough to play video games. And when these kids touch your fucking Joy-Cons, it gets disgusting. The buttons get all sticky. I, these kids' hands weren't even sticky. I yeah. have no idea how it's sticky now. Make them wash I, their hands like Tim used to do. With I'm me. telling you, I looked at Kevin, these kids' you, hands. I put these kids' hands in like my mouth. They weren't kids sticky. Before? Have you tried yeah, the hand yeah, washing thing? Yeah, I helped raise my little brother, Andrea. Cool. So why are you even asking this question then? You gotta hold them down and wash them out with a hose. It's pretty easy. <laughs> wash them out with a hose. Wash the hands out with a hose. Um, I, here's a, the thing I want to remind people of. The thing that I really thought would flop from Nintendo's hardware over the last two decades was the 2DS, right? Like, when they announced that, there was a lot of skepticism because it was just against the whole premise of the 3DS. Like, there was no 3D, it doesn't fold, had this weird shape, you call it a doorstop. But that sold what, over 70 million units? Shocking. Because it was that lower price point. Yeah. It was designed to be more durable. It was designed for people who wanted multiple 3DSs in their household but didn't want to pay the $300 price. And look at how well that did. I don't ha I've been looking for the total sales numbers for the 2DS and I'm having trouble finding them. Uh, that's another kind of funny.com slash you're wrong. I think we've asked for that on this show before and I just can't remember the number. Um, but even if... It was only 70 million for the 2DS. That's still an impressive amount of hardware. And this is something that people want, that people have been asking for. Something that's a little bit cheaper, that's portable, that comes in a variety of colors. This is gonna this is gonna sell crazy. Yeah, it's gonna do really well. I think it's gonna find an audience with our nerdy friends who want it for travel, who also just want the hot latest, greatest thing. I think it's gonna find it with the kids. I think again to the question uh, from Borzin is I think there are a ton of Pokemon fans who have not jumped on the Switch train and see this as a cheaper option. And now a really cool looking I'm not you know what I mean, like don't get me wrong, I'm becoming a Pokemon Go master. This will be covered on the Games Cast this week. Okay. And that's why I'm out there catching the fucking penguin. How are you three years? I got the polygon the man. I like to let you guys beta test stuff for me. Going. Ghostbusters World was doing great, and then what happened is when they the second thing updated, they fucking they cranked up all the microtransaction prices. Everything cost more to like, and then they soup up my ghost. I thought you couldn't like have like even get it to load. Oh, that was because I hadn't updated the app in a while. And then I I deleted the app and redownloaded the app, and then it was fine. But oh, you jump okay. in there now, it's the same ghosts. Pokemon Go, I jump in three years later. I'm like, look at all. We'll get to this later. Save you your questions for the games cast, please. Huh? They got different Pokemon in there. Oh, come on now, you kidding me? They got Pokemon you've never seen. They got this one thing. Looks like a dog, but brother, it ain't a dog. All right? Pink one? Yeah, he's there from Detective Pikachu. No, he's what around. What are you talking about? Nah, no, there's a bunch that there's this one that looks like a dog, but it's not a dog. They're, they got this one guy with a wrestling belt. Yeah, gray show me motherfucker. After, after work. I mean, after this is all done. I'll tell you what, man. This guy, you're just you walk in, you're like, clearly a, a man had sex with a dinosaur, and nine oh, months later, the Jesus. egg hatched, and this thing crawled out. You know Whoa. what I mean? And it can almost form sentences, but it can't, so we're still treating it like a poker <laughs> man. All right? Like, that's what's happening with this fucking Jesus. thing. Somebody's got to take the shotgun uh, and put it to there. its temple. I'm just letting you know what's going <laughs> wow. on out there, all right? God. Wow. Anyways, uh, okay. there's plenty of Pokemon fan who are going to buy this, uh, the, what, the... Uh, Zoobity boobity one that's coming out on <laughs> November eighth. The Pokemon themed uh, light Zaxion and Zamod. I don't know who I'm summoning demons from another dimension when I say these Pokemon name, but they're gonna buy that one too. Yeah. Uh, Andrea. Yes, Greg. Believe it or not, I have one more question about this, but I want to get some of the kind of funny.com slash your wrongs in there because I mm -hmm. wanted to mix them in as we went because we were asking questions and they weren't coming in. It turned out I had deadlines that were screwing everything up. Yeah. This is something I've been trying to figure out, and you too, I think. Lord of Pwn writes in and says, I could be misremembering, but someone, either on a games cast or a kind of funny games daily, made a bet that there would not be a Joy Con the Switch. I feel like it was a bet between Tim and Andrea, but I'm searching for video See, evidence. This is it what was, I was thinking was too, Jared Lord Eddie. of Pwn. I thought that we made this bet, and I told Tim he was wrong, that there but would be one. From what I understand, and I do believe in what has been verified on Twitter, is that Tim said, I was right in your face, Jared. Yeah. And Jared responded, I can't remember, mm -hmm. I bet 2019 or 2020 E3. Uh, and, and so maybe it was between Jared and I Tim? I think it was Jared and Tim being wrong, and I think, but I do think when Tim said, oh, is a joy call on the Switch, and Jared's like, no, I think you were like, what are you, are you crazy? Of course that's going to happen. But I could be wrong, because I drink a lot and don't no, remember no, no, things. No, Miller, you're right. Um, and Andrew's wrong. No, 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 no. We're not turning into an Andrew thing. It's Jared was no, wrong. No, Jared I'm Petty no, was no, wrong. I was no saying, one should listen to Jared Petty. You are right. Sure. Andrea wrong. Okay? That's yes, it. I don't. It's just scary. She's remembering things no, wrong. Did you hear what I said, though? I said I thought it was between me Andrea, and Tim. Andrea, I already said I don't listen to this show. So now you're asking 
Kevin, you're like full of a lot of sass today. <laughs> 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 vinegar the coffee's in my blood. <laughs> I love that kid. <laughs> so yeah, we do need clarification on exactly what the bet was and who it was between. If we've talked, look to, at that thing. I don't even like. It's I really said, pretty. I don't. It's I don't really fully understand pretty. The, the. I don't fully understand the Zaxons and the polygons. But like, and this is the Pokemon poly- polygon. Yeah. Have you ever seen this thing? Looks like one of those like wooden ducks you'd pull on a string, but it's called Polygon or something. Poly, 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 <laughs> wooden booby. ducks that you Pol- pull on a I don't string. Uh, fucking Google the Polygon duck and it'll come up from Pokemon. This You'll is see why I, I usually don't attempt to say Pokemon oh, names because I'm really bad at them. Okay. Po- is it Pori? No, Pori. I think that's the evolution, but that's past my time. I tell you what, man. He's in my he's in my Pokedex. I got him. Don't worry about it. Um. Era Gamer says, to be precise, Andrea, Nintendo has announced that there will be a full data transfer uh, between a Switch and a Switch Lite. I don't think that's uh, a you're wrong, but it is up yeah. on IGN that you can look at it. Because I'm more, I, we're talking about having how two e- different in- Yeah, we're in talking motion. about how easy it is to transfer. Of course, you're going to be is. able to transfer your data between them. But I'm talking about ease of doing so. Because I don't want to transfer all of my games. I just want to be able to download and I think a game or two and then have my, my save file go between my systems. And so. that's where people are clear. I, I read the thing from The Verge, right, about how this was working. And then we didn't have hands on because we used to have one switch. Uh, Matt the Wob jumps in and says, You have six months to resubscribe to the Nintendo Switch online before your cloud saves are lost. So that's great. Excellent. Uh, it do- it Borzen00 says it auto backs up cloud saves for games that support it. Okay. Um, then Error Gamer, Error Gamer says, I Error Gamer? Uh, yes, there are automatic backup of save games for Switch. There are even pop ups in future loading of the games when there are discrepancies between the local and cloud save. So that's perfect. Good to know. Um, okay. More information on this question. Stead John at says switch cloud saves. It does automatically back up oh, automatically, but only if the game isn't running. So if you leave the game and go to the eShop standby, it won't can't update. Good to know okay. as well. Uh, it's more transfer data information. Plotus says uh, Super Mario Party doesn't support handheld mode at all, only docked and tabletop modes. As the Switch Lite doesn't support docked or tabletop modes, it's unclear if Super Mario Party will be compatible, even if you pair additional mm, points. Good to, to know. Thank you. That wasn't the one I was missing. Well, especially on. since the Switch Lite won't have a kickstand and you can't dock it. So, like, I guess you put it on the table and everyone. But that's the thing. It's like, like that, and that oh, well, yeah. that was the thing with prop it up tabletop mode. I, th- I feel like for that, you can. There's got to be a workaround where they're going to be able to make like, all right, cool. We understand the Joy Cons can't come off. You're in tabletop mode if you want to mm-hmm. play this game, and you put. Well, it Well, I would hope that they're eventually going to release maybe an adapter that you can plug into the USB C port that will allow you to plug it into a television if you want that option. Yeah, man, hold your breath for that. Remember that Vita? Remember that? <laughs> I'm not gonna hold my breath. For hold that. your breath, everybody. I'm just saying it'd be a nice option for people. That's all. Poor Vita. Hey, man. In the, thank you. Ignacio Rojas says Porygon is the wood duck. It evolves into Porygon 2 and then into Porygon Z. So Porygon once 2 again. is Porygon 2 time. is its evolution name? Did you see it? Yeah, yeah, Look yeah. at him. But Look how show. cute he is. It's, Porygon 2? That's the best you could do? Someone in chat was saying that like it's a man-made Pokemon. That's why it's, it's just such a simple Like Geppetto. Name. Yeah. But like Porygon, well, not, really I mean, cool. Pokemon, you know. Porygon 2, really lame. Porygon Z, it was just a joke. Look at this. Look at this monstrosity. Porygon 2 is super derpy looking. Well, I mean, this is like a, a better. That's a better, yeah, rendition. Still, I hate him. Okay. okay. Fair. How does he eat? His head he is He doesn't need attached. to. He's a wooden duck. His head exactly. isn't attached to his body. How does Psyduck eat? Nobody knows. What? Yeah, <laughs> number, we're uh, back to, this is number two on BJ Bernardo's questions. Do you, and gamers in general, put your Switch in the dock and play games on the TV screen? With this new model, not having the ability to output to TV, it would be strictly handheld all of the PlayStation Vita. Oh shit, it does live. Docking, the Switch sounded cool, but I find most of my friends just use it in handheld mode. Thanks for crushing it, BJ Bernardo. Andrea, what's your experience? I use my dock to charge my Switch and that's it. Yep. Really? Yeah, for me, I, when I come home from a trip, I put my Switch in the dock, I plug in my Pro Controller, and then I forget about it until it's time to get back on the plane. Then I grab my Switch, and I grab my Pro Controller, and yeah. I'm out the door. That's yeah. making a lot of sense. I think cool. it all comes down to how you use the Switch, you know what I mean? And I understand that as uh, somebody who commutes to work, like I like I remember when I used to write PSP reviews, and I'd always talk about playing on the train, and people like, what the fuck, who are you? And I'm like, oh, well, I live in a major city, and I use public transit. I, my Switch is always thought of as a handheld. I think I made a reference to this on Gamescast or the Games Daily with Tim this week where I was like, I have to stop myself. I, on the plane playing Moonlighter I, with the Switch I was and I jumped over to Super Mario Maker 2, I was like, what a great handheld. And I was like, oh, this isn't even a handheld. Like, that's not what this is designed to re, uh, in all you know intents and purposes to be. And so 
for me, that's always the how much I, that's the test of how much I'm into a game. Mm -hmm. Is that yeah, if I'm here or on a plane or in a hotel room and I'm playing on the Switch, great. When I come home, if I that's how I knew I was in love with Moonlighter, where I walked through the door after that trip where I found it and immediately into the dock and immediately into the Pro Controller and then played it on the giant TV. And it was like whenever I run into those kind of games, whether it be Breath of the Wild, whether it be that, whether it be Odyssey, it's always that weird thing of like, wow, what a quaint experience. Look at me playing my Switch on the TV because I just do not do that. That's not what I think of with that system. No, I'm with you. I, I also use it exclusively in handheld mode. There's a couple of games that I've uh, plugged it in for, but for the most part, when I'm at home, I'm playing on my PlayStation 4 or my Xbox One Yeah. Um, because they're just... They're there. I like the library of games and those consoles sure. better than Nintendo's library. And the thing I keep thinking about as we're talking about this Nintendo Switch Lite is that I hope... Someday, and I don't know if this is even something Nintendo would consider because it's just kind of against their business model. I want them to make like a, a pro version this is my question. of this because yeah, yeah. When, when I'm looking at these stats, uh, the sirens seven, are going to be on our end. Yes, the 720p locked resolution, the smaller screen size, all of this. I'm like, but I want better. I have an iPhone, you know, XS. I have this big, beautiful screen. I want a nice big screen on a device that I'm taking on the go because that's what I'm used to playing, sure. you know? Like, and I think that you see the tablet market and how successful it mm -hmm. is and how powerful they are. And I understand that comes at a cost, but I'm saying I will pay the cost. I don't need one that's only $199, yeah. but I understand why they made it at that price point. But I want less, you know, less um, bezel. bezel. I want more screen. I want it lighter. I want it prettier and more powerful. I will pay for all of that. Yeah. And I know that there are lots of people out there like me that would also pay for, would pay double the price to get a more powerful on the go machine. Kevin, what do you got? Uh, doesn't this kind of prove that like it's coming? I, no. I go the opposite. No, no, yeah. not for Nintendo. Really? I, I think it's That's never been their thing. I, people, that was the first thing I saw well, people the, going like, off about with this today. And I'm like, I do not under any circumstance think that you're getting a, a pro. And I just wait. think because it's just not what Nintendo does. Not as but a portable, is, like, not as a portable only version with a uh, with a better screen, right? What about the like uh, new 3DS? Uh, the XL, even like before that. Because they right. went light and then they went XL. But the XL was not a substantial leap in power or visuals than the, the original I mean, 3DS. But like the new 3DS XL was. No, right? I mean, like it was more powerful, but Processor it was. She's talking about like controller. a PlayStation 4 Pro. Right. No, I know. I know. I'm just being like, I, to... I don't think the leap will be that high, but I think that there eventually will be a Switch with a bigger screen and yes. more I think processing power. What so I want to be clear about what I'm yeah. saying. A, I think that Nintendo will make a pro version of the Switch later on that's more powerful and has a better screen. But you want like a super fucking beefy Xbox One. Yeah, but not for Nintendo not for power, not for processing that, power, just for visuals. I just want a better screen sure. in a lighter form factor. I, I think that we'll get a bigger Switch with a 1080 display that does 1080 as a handheld. Handheld. Yeah, and like that will be their pro version. But they're just so far behind that like that's what counts as pro, right? Okay. Yeah. That I can. That I can. I can. Okay. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm back on board. Then yes, that'll happen. Yes. I just meant like the hey, people who are in love with tech. Here's this thing that's gonna do X, Y, and Z, and yada mm -hmm. yada. And it's like, yeah, sure, okay. But even then, for me personally, I don't know. I mean, I will, but I don't know. <laughs> will I? Would I like? I don't look at my Switch right now, and I mean, yeah, I wish there was less bezel on it. Um, I wish maybe I maybe I had this option in the beginning because I do like I don't like the wiggle on my Joy Con sometimes, but oh, then yeah, I also we'll usually carry up. I usually carry the Pro Controller with me anyway. Like, mm -hmm. I'm super happy with my Switch right now this many years in. And, uh, to an, and I would imagine, too, part of that is that I don't look at it as one of my primary gaming machines, right? Like, I feel like it is a quaint thing that I'm when I'm playing Switch. It's right behind PlayStation 4 for me, but it's still, like, it has its purpose. And so I think it serves its purpose so well right now that I'm not sitting there going... Man, I wish that. Now, that might all change again, right? Because I'm the guy who's so stoked about cloud gaming and the possibility of how that could all work. Because, yeah, I do want to be in a hotel room and pop up the iPad Pro and put on a, you know, my Google Stadia or my, pro, my you know, what, any controller and play on it and have it be awesome and have the, the games I have at home that mm -hmm. I feel like I'm on vacation from at my fingertips there. Did they say or confirm that the Pro Controller is going to be supported by Switch Lite? Um, I didn't see anything about that. Kind of funny.com slash you're wrong. There's been a lot of information out there today. I would imagine, yeah, because you can pair Joy-Cons with it. So why wouldn't you be able to pair yeah, with that? Yeah, it would make it was sense. Just, there's no, you don't have to prop it up on something. There's you no just got to get a Switch fix. 
Yeah, there you go. See, oh. yeah, look at that. Just, oh. just put up your put up your campaign already. Everyone keeps asking me, "Where'd you get the switch fix?" And I'm like, "You can't buy him yet, well, but soon." Soon. Soon. Uh, a couple more of your wrongs I'm going to toss in. I want to make sure we're keeping all the Nintendo stuff together. Bojangles2089 says, Not a your wrong, but I wanted to let the masses know that Pokemon Let's Go Eevee slash Pikachu does not support cloud save data, so that save will be locked to one switch. Bummer for anyone who had, who had put 100 plus hours into that game. Can you put your save data on a card and then just pop the card into another switch and then it works? I'm not familiar enough Probably with not. using that I stuff don't, inside I don't Switch. I, as you can tell, I don't play a lot on my Switch. I, it's, it's like my Diablo machine when I travel. And I don't, like, see, I don't, even, I don't even know if I'd go that far. Cause I, I, and I can't speak for you. I feel like I play a lot of Switch. But I don't put it... These are questions in terms of like how back at IGN when I'd have multiple Vitas or multiple uh, PSPs. And like I was putting those machines through paces a normal consumer never did. Mm -hmm. I, I play a lot of Switch in a very normal capacity of just like... I got one machine and this is what I do. Right. Like I don't worry about like all these different things. Uh, Fendi says Switch Lite will support Pro controllers. Excellent. So you're all set there. Um, just make sure we got all this stuff here. Yeah. Mong Mitch says you cannot put save data on a card and transfer it to another Switch. What? Boom! Why did you suck, that's, Nintendo? That's an oversight. If you didn't have enough Nintendo news, let's talk about number two. The doctor is in. Whoa. Dr. Mario is crushing it uh, after shadow dropping a day before they said they would. This is James Bachelor at gamesindustry.biz. Having arrived a day early, Dr. Mario World is off to a solid start on iOS, topping the charts within less. Within less than 12 hours. A report from App Annie shows that the newest Nintendo mobile game reached number one in the US iOS game charts by 11 a.m. when it launched yesterday. When comparing for hourly ranking with the other major mobile releases this summer, this puts Dr. Mario well ahead of Harry Potter, Harry Potter, Wizards Unite, Niantic's Harry Potter themed uh, follow-up to Pokemon Go didn't reach number one until 12 a.m. on June 21st, a day after it launched. However, Korean pop band and global phenomenon BTS have both properties beaten as their visual novel and character col collectathon BTS World reached number one four hours faster than Dr. Mario. Teenage girls, man. Kevin, I'd love you to d play BTS World for me and please give me a review tomorrow what's, on GameCast. What's BTS World? Wow. It's the wow, Korean Kevin. pop band collectathon. What? What? You don't Andrea? know about BTS? I thought you were saying because he, he clearly wasn't listening to what I just said. I don't know anything outside of this. What okay, is? Okay, uh, there you go. See, so chill out, bro. Oh, well, bro, everybody, calm down. Also, Miller, I wasn't listening. Like uh, I, I said knew you. I know you weren't. I'm defending you're not I listening. I was looking at pictures of Paula on Instagram. Okay. Okay, that's, I, I didn't need wife, that information. And I love her. Maybe okay. you should be working. Just a thought. Uh, I'm taking notes. Very well, too. When's this game coming out for uh, uh, Android? Uh, it's out now. You said iOS. Yeah. We're talking about iOS charts, Kevin. That's the story. App Annie reports that in the UK, Dr. Mario World has peaked at number nine overall, but was number one in puzzle games. Then, have you put, so actually not even then yet. Have you been playing Dr. Mario World? No, I just downloaded it this morning because yeah. I've been too busy playing Lego Tower. Nice. Which we'll talk about in the game's cast. I'm Pokemon going it up. But I downloaded Dr. Mario on the way today and started playing through the tutorial as well today. And it's that thing where it's so basic right now. I'm like, all right, cool. I need to get past this and play more of it. Because it's like, where do you drop him? Like, oh, it's okay. Pretty easy where to drop him right there. I love Dr. Mario. It's one of my all-time favorite Nintendo games. And I love Match 3. And so this feels like it might be a match made in heaven for me. But I heard you or Tim and Gary talking about it yesterday about how uh, apparently the microtransactions are egregious. Yeah. Which is but, like, uh, as somebody who plays a lot of mobile games, I think maybe I'm a little bit more immune to how egregious they are because I'm just so used to them. And in my mind, I've already allotted a certain amount of dollars I'm going to spend on microtransactions because I like supporting game developer development. And yeah. you can't support that if you never give the developer any money. Sure. Um, but that's a, a different mindset than most people. But... I understand the frustration people feel when they're playing and then they hit that paywall, they hit those timers, and it just interrupts the flow you have in a game. Yeah. And I do wish there was a, a way to 
find a happy marriage of the developer making the money they need to make and gamers not having to feel this p- this pain point of constantly getting these dings like I yeah. need more money ding I need more money all the time and that's where I wanted to throw in uh, in this because again I'm still in the tutorial stuff playing on the train today uh, IGN's uh, Ben Berto- Ben Bertoli uh, had a has a write up basically the preview of the final version that's going on here His, one of the things I'm pulling from it is this uh, the biggest issue facing Doctor Mario World however is not its redesigned puzzles like like many mobile puzzle games, Dr. Mario World presents each of its puzzles as a single stage on a large overworld map. However, in order to access each stage, you have to offer up one of your hearts, parentheses, or lives, which can only be replenished by purchasing more or ra- waiting around for half an hour to earn one back. While it doesn't make it unplayable, to be sure, it makes it very clear from the get-go uh, where this Dr. Mario's priorities lie. IGN also had a wiki up, obviously, explaining all this for people like myself who were jumping in today. I thought I would read the bullet points from that. You get one heart every 30 minutes, and you can have a maximum of five hearts. You can receive hearts from a friend, but a player can only give, you, can only give one heart to one friend per day. You get one heart for clearing a stage. Note, you do not get hearts for clearing a stage that was already, has already been cleared. Uh, miscellaneous prizes via question mark blocks also give you hearts. Then you can get infinite hearts. Two ways. When you first play Dr. Mario World, you are given 60 minutes of infinite hearts, allowing you to play for an hour before using any hearts. So theoretically, right now, my hour should be up. Because I saw the infinite heart things. Hold on. I'm over here. Clicking that open. Probably got to reload and stuff. Uh, and after this initial 60 minutes, you have to pay 30 diamonds for infinite hearts. So How much is 30 diamonds? Hold on. I'm, I'm loading look. up right now. Because that's what I would like to... I, so this is my thing with some mobile games don't allow you like a, a like a master unlock. You just have to keep paying piecemeal for as long as you play the game. And that becomes incredibly tiresome. Especially when you keep hitting the wall and you want to keep playing the game. So it looks like... Yeah. A dollar equals 10 hearts so you can so, get 20 hearts right now for 199 no uh, how much are diamonds i'm sorry diamonds that's what i'm saying sorry diamonds 20 diamonds right now is 199 so for 30 diamonds it would be you have to do so you'd have to pro, you'd have to go buy the 50 plus three bonus ones which is five bucks so for five dollars you can get infinite hearts that is an for, inc- that's a very reasonable price for 30 minutes no you have to pay 30 diamonds for infinite hearts is all it says period Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, oh, wait, yeah, yeah. wait, wait. Is it infinite hearts for a set amount of time or infinite hearts, like, indefinitely? No, the IGN, th- I, I was, I think Kevin and I were on the same page of being mistaken. It just says after this initial 60 minutes, you have to pay 30 diamonds for infinite hearts. So you have to pay five bucks. And this is what I heard people talking about, that it's a similar thing to Mario Run, that there's a $5 thing, basically, to play as your leisure. If, it, if $5 is the barrier to entry, that's, like, so doable. That's like a coffee at Starbucks. Yeah. For yeah, Dr. Mario on your phone. I gotta agree. I don't see why these kids are complaining now. Well, they're not complaining. I think. Mean, well, if that's correct, if, you if want it to play is truly indefinite, infinite hearts, then like. Well, that's it. So five dollars, I can play this as long as I want. Kind of funny.com slash you're wrong in case we're wrong, but I think that's I think that is correct because I remember people talking about the five dollar wall, and I was wondering when I was playing it, I didn't see it like anywhere. I was mm-hmm. I didn't understand exactly what was going on. I bet you someone's gonna write in and be like, "Hey, dum dums, it's not indefinite, infinite hearts," and then we'll be like. Chat. Some people. Yeah, I'm just. Say, what's what IGN.com say? What what is, what's chat saying, Kev? Thirty diamonds for sixty minutes. Which so is what I assume. After it says here, yeah, after this initial sixty minutes, you will have to pay thirty diamonds for infinite hearts. Full stop. That's what IGN says. And then Tagless02 says, for the Dr. Mario Hearts, I think it's accumulated sixty minutes for your free. Ah, so it's not like my hours been running while right. I was offline. Gotcha. And then um, Bork 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 says 30 diamonds for 60 minutes of infinite hearts. Is that correct? You just said 30 diamonds for 60 minutes. So if it's $5 for infinite hearts for an hour, that's that's not then good. that's, that's kind of gross. I hate that. Now, cumulative still, though. A cumulative is better for sure. Sure. Um, but still, like. <laughs> Vice.com's headline is Dr. Mario is a great game. For two hours. Then it wants money. <laughs> but I mean, this is what happened with, with Super Mario Run and, and why Nintendo publicly said that they were going to change their strategies because they gave a master unlock fee and then they didn't see the return in profits that they had projected and that they were anticipating to make. Now, I think that there's a whole other discussion to be made about whether that game was going to be worth people wanting to spend money on because look at Fire Emblem Heroes like that game prints money and so I think that they just need to find the right mix of gameplay and microtransactions that get people wanting to spend money in the game yeah 
because there's clearly an appetite for people to want to spend money on microtransactions and mobile games. It's a, you know, a billion dollar ah. business, but so yeah, the IGN bullet point is unclear, but then underneath it, it has a, a chart broken down. That is five hearts is 10 diamond, 10 diamonds, 60 minutes of infinite hearts is 30 diamonds. So, so it's yeah. just for 60 minutes. Yeah. Uh, That's so thir- a bummer. <laughs> 30 diamonds gets you 60 minutes of infinite hearts. That sucks. Yeah. yeah. But I don't, yeah. I don't know. It's one of those. I want to play more of it. And I actually want yeah. to get through my infinite hearts to actually see what this is like right. and see how much of a stumbling block it is. It's really just all about perception, right? It's, sure. like, it's the idea of, is this $5 going to make this hour for me enjoyable? And a lot of times when I'm trying to justify the cost of something to myself, I, I relate it to the cost of food or drinks. I'm like if I go to a bar and I order a nice martini here in San Francisco, it's probably going to cost me about 15 bucks because drinks are expensive here. Sure. And I'm probably going to maybe spend anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes drinking that drink. And then the drink is going to be gone. And my $15 is also going to be gone. Would I have just as much enjoyment from playing Dr. Mario for 30 minutes, having spent that much money? Who knows? But this is just what goes on inside Andrea's head when I think about spending money on stuff. I'm like, hmm, is it worth the cost of a drink or would I rather have the drink? That's That's a good way to break it down. The other thing, too, is, and I'm not uh, a big mobile gamer. And I don't know if Dr. Mario, once I get through the tutorial, ramps up. And I'm like, oh, now I'm actually into it. Mm Because I was never a big Dr. Mario kid growing up. But then again, because I was Sega kid, what up? The other thing that breaks down in this, maybe it's also how you and you want to play this game or how you plan on playing this game mm-hmm. whereas like cool i played on the train today and i'm not hankering to play it right now at my desk whereas like pokemon i want to open up and look at pokestops or whatever like if it's just me for the 30 minutes back and forth then i'm going to earn the hearts the five hearts that i can earn throughout the 30 the 30 minute segments throughout the day to get to that point to have that puzzle for when i want it and then i put it down and i'm done maybe it is a good way to stop rather than I'm so addicted to Dr. Mario and I want to go further that I'm doing it every day. I do it for 30 minutes on the bus ride and I'm done. Yeah, no, I I don't doubt that lots of players play that way as Mm. well, which is why there's a lot of these timers built into mobile games because they know people put their phone down, pick it up, put it down. Um, I would like to see them add an option where you can pay to unlock an extra heart spot indefinitely. Yeah. So like instead of being able to only carry a maximum of five, pay five bucks to unlock a sixth heart or pay 10 bucks to unlock three more hearts or whatever the scheme they want to... Do so that way you can build up more hearts. So if you want to play for a longer clip, you can sit down and play for like an hour or so. Um, I run into that problem when I play Legend of Soul Guard because they use an energy system, which is very similar. And most of the time, I don't notice my energy because I don't play long enough to spend it all. Yeah. But sometimes I'm like in a groove and I want to keep playing and then I've run out of energy and now I'm like, well, here I am. Worth pointing out too, Big Curves just says, Dr. Mario World life hack. Just clear the stage you're playing and you'll get the heart back. I mean, that's what we did talk about earlier, right? Well, in the you thing here, be good. you get one heart for clearing the stage. No, you do not get hearts for clearing. So I mean, like, it is that thing. Yeah, of, it's easy in the beginning, though. But sure. when the puzzles get much more difficult, towards and get more challenging, yep. and what you want out of a puzzle game, and you and you lose your die, then you lose the hearts. That's I'm what just we're saying. Big about. curse is saying, get good. And you know what I'm wow. saying. Thanks wow. to our sponsors. Uh, our sponsor today <laughs> is Hims. You've heard us talk about Hims a lot. Obviously, Nick and Andy use it on the other side of the wall because they noticed. Their hair was starting to thin, so they went to 4 a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness, and more for men. 66% of men start to lose their hair by the age 35, and once you start to notice thinning hair, it can be too late. Thanks to science, baldness can be optional. Hims is helping guys be the best version of themselves with licensed physicians and FDA-approved products to help treat hair loss. Hims was created by a guy who knows some health men's health conversations are easier online than in person. No more awkward in-person doctor visits or long pharmacy lines. For Hims connects you to real doctors online, which could save you hours completely confidentially and discreetly. Answer a few quick questions, a doctor will review, and if they determine it's right for you, they can prescribe you medication to treat hair loss that is shipped directly to your door. Order now. My listeners can get started with Hims and their complete hair kit for just $5 today right now while supplies last and subjects to that their doctor's approval. See the website for full details and safety information. This could cost hundreds if you went to a doctor or a pharmacy or somewhere else. Go to 4 slash games daily. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash games daily. 4 slash games daily. Daily, 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 daily. Number 
three on the rubber report. <laughs> really? Dude, yeah, this is a good one, too. I've Nintendo been... came out swinging. What do you want me to do yeah. about it? You know what I mean? I'm not saying that you did anything wrong. Amazon's making a Lord of the Rings MMO. This is Michael McWhorter over at Polygon. Amazon Game Studios is co-developing a new massively multiplayer online game based on J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. The free-to-play game will be based on Tolkien's literary trilogy, not the Peter Jackson-helmed films, and is unrelated to Amazon's upcoming original TV series based on The Lord of the Rings that will be set in the Second Age. Working with Amazon is Athlon Games and Liu, which originally announced the project in 2018. Athlon's Lord of the Rings MMO was announced for unspecified or uns, yeah, unspecified consoles and PC and was described as, quote, an online game set in the world of Middle Earth at a time long before the events of the Lord of the Rings exploring lands, people and creatures never before seen by fans of the Tolkien universe, end quote. <laughs> Amazon's internal game studios, including developers working on the company's original MMO, New World, will support Athlon and make the Lord of the Rings game. Amazon boasts veteran developers who have worked on games like EverQuest, Destiny, Planetside, World of Warcraft, and other MMOs are contributing to the game's development. Uh, release date for the Lord of the Rings MMO was not announced. You excited, Andrea? I'm intrigued. Yeah? I'm going to hold on my excitement, mostly because I'm not a big MMO person. Sure. I love the Lord of the Rings universe. I've been a Tolkien fan for a very long time, pretty much my entire life. And I like the idea of an MMO set in this universe, but we've seen major um, literary and TV and film properties get an MMO treatment that have just kind of like fallen on their faces in the past. And so I'm reserving judgment. So I did a little bit of research trying to figure out which studio was going to be making this. And um, under Leu, like Athlon Games, I was like, who is this studio? Why haven't I heard of them before? So I did a little digging and they are a relatively new studio. They were actually uh, announced in May of 2018. And then okay. this project was announced uh, just a few months later. So I imagine they made this studio specifically for this project or at least partially to work on this project. Um, obviously underneath their uh, publishing umbrella, the most notable game that people have probably been playing recently is Warframe from Digital Extremes. But important to note that that is a different developer but they are under the same publisher so hopefully you know they'll be able to pull expertise from some of the other people that have published games um i believe athlon's athlon's only actual release so far is samurai showdown okay which uh was out last month i believe so yeah i'm excited about anything lord of the rings related but specifically an mmo there's clearly a lot more that needs to be seen Gotcha. Yeah, uh, I'm not a Lord of the Rings guy, uh, but I, you know, hey, go get your MMO on. There's not enough MMOs anymore. You know what I mean? Remember when they were everywhere? And there's loved so them? many MMOs. Not as much as there <laughs> used to be, is what I'm saying. I'm not saying there's none. Obviously, DC Universe mm -hmm. Online is still taking the world by storm. Coming to Switch this summer. Who can wait? Not I me. I think you just have your PC gaming blinders on. What are you talking about? Me? <laughs> I'm aware of what's happened over there. They got Excel, Minesweeper. They still got the Star Trek and no MMO. MMOs. You guys, they got the Star there Trek. Are no MMO. MMOs anymore. <laughs> I said not as many, Andrea. Not as many, Andrea. I would argue there are more. No, oh, you're crazy. You're a crazy person. Okay. Kind of funny.com slash you're wrong, but you're welcome to write in and tell me how wrong I am. I don't, <laughs> I don't fucking know what y'all doing over there with your mouse and keyboards. Ooh, drivers. <laughs> you nailed them. Those fucking nerds. Let's talk about a real game, The Division 2, all right? Yeah. Number four, we'll run through it quickly. Uh, the episode one DC, DC Outskirts expedition details have been revealed, including the fact that it's going to release on July 23rd this year for all pa year one pass holders and July 30th for all players. What this entails is two new main missions. Uh, Camp White Oak, Division agents stage a well-planned attack into the presidential compound as they seek to bring the now traitor president, Andrew Ellis, to justice. Wait, what? And the Manning National Zoo. Uh... Uh, Emmalyn Shaw, leader of the outcast, fled after her defeat in D.C. and is now held up at the zoo, regaining strength. Agents are on the hunt to eliminate Shaw, nipping the outcast, reawakening in the bud. Then there's new experience, expeditions. In this new experience, players enter Kelly College, where uh, contact has been lost with a military convoy full of vital supplies. When they receive what appears to be a final broadcast, they form an expedition to find the surviving members in need of rescue. Um, expeditions will be split into three different wings for players to complete. Each wing will have a specific theme and tone to be released on a week-by-week -week basis. Completing all three wings grants uh, access to the exclusive treasure full room, treasure room full of rewards. Then there's uh, new weapons and gears, uh, new exotic weapon, new exotic gear, two new weapons, classified assignments, uh, and then alongside co content, 
Episode, alongside content, episode one will also bring game updates based on player feedback, including a new Discover difficulty setting for Operation Dark Hours Raid. The new Discover Discovery difficulty, along with its corresponding matchmaking option, which is a big deal you couldn't matchmake before, will allow more players to experience the Division 2 in its entirety. While Operation Dark Hours exotic loot remains exclusive to normal difficulty, agents playing the Discovery difficulty can expect a variety of great rewards while training for the normal difficulty. So they're putting training wheels on this, so you can all stop complaining about how hard the raid is. You guys beat the raid yet? No. Fuck no, I didn't beat Never the raid. Never went back. You kidding uh, me? Yeah, totally. It well, totally. It totally. I was like, oh, this isn't. It wasn't fun. fun. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I think that's something that they still really haven't addressed. the The real difficulty isn't even that the enemies are just awful bullet sponges and the mechanics aren't super engaging. It's that you need to have everybody in your eight person team with their opt optimal maximum loadouts going in for your first run. And that just kind of takes the, the wind out of the sails of the fun of doing a raid. Because you want to be able to run a raid multiple times with different crews of people to get different drops of gear and to experience things differently. And when you have to just keep grinding in the world to get a perfect build in order to even be competent at the raid, it, it just wasn't the style of rating that I personally enjoy and so I just never went back and exactly. that no, was a bummer I love the division it's still gonna be my hundred platinum details on that soon uh, I'm gonna play the, this stuff all sounds great what they're talking about uh, the raid though for sure was hey guess what go in and I was like this isn't fun this is the kind of uh, video game rating and stuff that's just not for me and I totally get that this for other people I was very much like I'm gonna let you get either the next raid out or at least another giant title update that moves gear score up to 575 and then when I'm max level there I'll come back here and have fun actually shooting these things and right. having to do this because the coordination we were doing we were getting on it was fun but it was also like this is fun just for getting our teeth kicked in and I don't think it's getting any better yeah exactly so I am interested to see what this episode is going to be though so maybe I'll jump back into the division. Uh, and then there's other stuff coming. Yeah, crafting improvements. Player can now craft their gear up to score 500. Share blue. Most of that stuff was known. The big news, I think, honestly, was that division raids uh, difficulty stuff. But more importantly, July 23rd for all year one pass holders and July 30th for all players. Andrew? Yes, Greg. That's coming soon. It is. But I want more news about the now. If I want to know what came to mom and grab shops today, where would I go? You'd go to the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the kind of any games daily show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah! Out today! Power Rangers ba Battle for the Grid, the fan favorite fighting game by developer Enway, in partnership with Hasbro and Lionsgate, uh, is available on PS4, Switch, and Xbox <laughs> One, and it's getting its first two season one characters, Trey of Trifornia and Jen Scotts, to be followed by Lord Zed in the future update. Players can purchase each individual character for $6.99 or the season pass for $14.99. Uh, Dr. Mario World is officially available on iOS and Android devices today, even though it kind of came out yesterday. Uh, Soul Serpa is on PlayStation 4, Xbox One. Switch and PC. Uh, Doling's Invasion is on Xbox One. Grass Cutter Mutated Lawns is on Xbox One and Switch. Emoji Charades is on PC. And Godhood is on PC. New dates for you. Farming Simulator 19 expands its John Deere vehicles on July 23rd with a John Deere Cotton DLC. Uh, trying the Ultimate Collection is coming to Switch this fall alongside the already announced platforms of PS4, Xbox One, and PC. It'll include all four trines, including the unreleased trine for the Nightmare Prince. Then on July 17th, Nintendo Online adds Wrecking Crew, Donkey Kong 3, and here's an official statement from Nintendo. But that's not all! That's coming to the paid online service this month. On the same day, a rewind feature will be available to use in the entire collection of NES Nintendo Switch Online games, allowing players to easily rewind gameplay by pressing both ZL and ZR if they make a mistake or just want to retry a section of the game. Wait, now hold the phone for a second. Ring this a ding ding. Hold the phone for Andrew Renee. This rewind feature is going to be available for all games or just this Donkey Kong game? I can't oh, tell. Everything. I can't tell what the bullet points. If this is like a Donkey Kong Three bullet point, or if this is like a Nintendo Switch Online bullet point. I, I for me, it's it, I've turned the page, but it's for all. It's for everything. Because it hmm. says to use with the entire collection of NES on Nintendo Switch Online games. Okay, so just a rewind feature will be available to use with the entire collection of NES of all of the NES Nintendo Switch. Yeah, Online Yeah, yeah. This games. is just a Nintendo Switch Got Online. It. It's not like you're playing Smash, uh, mm -hmm. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, Barrett. So that's fine. And is the timestamp right? Like that I gave you. It starts at the right place? Yeah, but I'm asking you specifically, does it start where it needs to start? Or are we going to have to talk over it? Or where are we going? It starts, it starts where it needs to start. 
Is this okay. the thing that I also pulled up for the video? Are we talking about? Are we talking about this? Yeah. Yeah. No, good. I want to hear. Okay. I need to. I need to hear, it, Greg. Uh, we have. Give it to me. Terrifying yeah. information, everybody. No, it's gonna be bad. Kind of funny control. I'm sending it to you. All right. I'm preparing right. to eat crow. From kind of funny. <laughs> dot com slash you're wrong. We have the Kevin one and only. A, Kevin, I dropped the link in the chat for you. Iman in DC saying no, not a you're wrong, but no, that's the wrong one. Where am I? Oh, it's up here. Sorry, it's actually Lord of Pwn. Is that not time stamped, Kevin? I, I, the time stamp link is in the ch is in the doc, Kevin. Everyone's freaking out, and it's if you go to me. Your, go to control. Go, go to, to control your Slack. wrong <laughs> in the in the doc, Kevin. Two people are talking to me. Go to control. I'm Slack. there. I'm there. There's no time stamp. Kevin, it's automatically stamped when it comes don't through that. No, it isn't. Look Kevin, at it. I've it gotten, would have the stamp right there. That's you the one I sent to Barrett, though. Did Barrett, it? why didn't you send it to him? Wait, Kevin, I have the time stamp oh, link ah! in the kind of funny games daily doc. <laughs> Go to the Kind of Funny Games Daily Doc. Under your wrong, I have the timestamped link. Okay, give me one second. Because I'm a professional at my job. Thank you. Unlike yeah, these great. guys. That's what it looks like when it has Even the though it would behoove me to wait, not wait, give wait, you stop. the link because it's going to make me look like an asshole. Hold on, we'll, wait for, we'll wait for we get there to your wrong. Instead, what we'll do is squat up. If you didn't know, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Be part of the show. We love and appreciate you. You give your name, platform of choice, why you need help in a video game. Uh, I read it here. The best friends come and find you. Everybody has a good time. Caleb needs help on PlayStation. His PSN is. C J D one 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 two, and he says it's pronounced eleven twelve. Fuck you, I'm spelling it out. C J D one 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 two. I play the occasional Apex C O D S W B F two, but I mostly single player focused. I just like to see what other best friends are playing and compare trophies. I also enjoy comparing decisions slash progress in games like Detroit or on the Ubisoft app. So if you want to compare things with Caleb, hit him up. C J D eleven twelve. Uh, we ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games to go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody because we love you all so so much so, um, so I'm looking through we've been good about doing the other stuff and updating all the other stuff here yeah. so yeah the only thing we have here is Lord of Pwn with news that could shock the foundations and rock the walls of kind of funny mm -hmm. Lord of Pwn writes in and says Tim said in the January 8th episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily, that there would be a Joy-Conless Switch and that we would see it this year. Andrea did not believe him, wow. but there was no bet. And then he has this source. So go ahead and play it for us, if Kevin. Only someone had called um, can we talk about Andrea. how great this dress is, though? Love that, that dress. One of my why favorite. Does this, why does this all look so. It's going like, to be the only amazing. positive thing I have to say about this. Play but I fully it. admit that I was wrong here. <laughs> You're like, I don't even have for to see For the record. It. Ready? Yeah. Just a little bigger. I, I wish it was a lot bigger. I mean, that's like the, the biggest drawback for the Switch right now because the portability is fantastic, but I agree with you that I just keep looking at the screen going, why is there not a bigger option? There will be. I think. Do you think they're going to do like Hold Switch XL? Oh, they got to. They're going to do an XL. They're going to do a mini. A light well. or whatever. How can yeah. it get smaller? Good job, no, Francis. I don't think they'll do a mini. I think it'll be like a weird like... It's going to be one where the, you can't remove the Joy-Cons. Yeah. Stand by that shit. I don't... Take uh, it to the hmm. bank. Oh, shit. I believe that I they'll do we'll one that doesn't have to dock, this but... Year. Ooh, yeah, Why? Like a non -dock Ooh. Pokemon. You want to double down on that stuff. God. You got a family. You got two kids. Man, one of those kids like, I want to play Pokemon. The other kid's like, I do too. You need two Switches. You already but got Tim. one. You got to get that dumb little kid, the one that's easier <laughs> to not break. <laughs> I want to call on the best friends who are watching on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames to write into kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. And please let me know when during the 3DS life cycle did, was the 2DS introduced. Is there more? Is that, is the that one it? That That's the most definitive thing? Yeah. So you, didn't, you, you hemmed in your heart, but you didn't come out and say Okay. You were I thought shit. it was going to be worse. I thought it was going to be worse. <laughs> I mean, that was pretty bad. I did think it was going to be worse. I feel like you, you, you were buried yeah, out. I'm still yeah. looking for somebody remember, to nail Jared Petty's ass to the wall. Remember All right, where's I, that video of him being like, like, no, and Tim being like, doki doki, it's gonna fucking happen. You I feel know like I mean? today when I was like, Andrew, you're wrong. Greg I was Lewis wrong right. about it being Tim. You're you're correct about that. Andrea? I had this Andrea? conversation with somebody. Andrea? What? You were wrong. I it's said I was Andrea? wrong, Kevin. It's okay. <laughs> What Everybody, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily, and it's one of my favorite episodes we've ever done. <laughs> if you like this show, support us on Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. You can ask questions, comments, concerns there. Uh, tomorrow, it's going to be me and Andrea once again. Friday, breaking news, a special guest that I'm not ready to announce. Because for the first time ever, 
I used to negotiate exclusive reveals all the time back at you know IGN, right? I'd get on the front page. Yeah, I'd when just, you had that uh, up at noon life going. Exactly. This time, just negotiated an exclusive reveal on my Twitter at 9 a.m. <laughs> on, wow. on, uh, on Friday, and then that guest will be connected to that thing there, and we'll talk about what we tease there. It's a Comic Con tease for you. Um, so it'll be fun. It's not gigantic. Like don't don't freak out. Like I'm not about to announce. Like you know they're also putting. Superman and Captain Marvel or something. You know what I mean? I don't know. Something stupid. It's no, not like that. Shirtless no. Spider-Man's going to be in the Avengers game. Well, God, that would be that would be worthwhile. You Shazam? Is that what you meant? No, I meant to say something wrong, but then I just jam- jumped okay. it all out. I jammed and then it he out. cut himself off because he didn't want to accidentally say the, the right well, the thing. Well, the problem is if I even hint at what I'm doing. Like, it's not, it's not a Marvel thing, right? Or a DC thing. It's not like that. It's not that big. Come on now. Get serious. Would you say it's a... Uh, it's, here's no, what I will say. No you want to know what I will say? I will wait, say this. Wait, wait. It is a huge deal for you and me, Kevin Coelho. Us? You and me, this is big time in you our in, in our wheelhouse. What what do we like a lot? Don't start naming things. Me what would we get excited about? Pat, it's Pat upon two. <laughs> Pat upon <laughs> two, Shira Yoshida, guess us. Uh, this has been Kinda Funny Games Daily. You know what I was you know the rigmarole. Uh, twitch.tv slash kinda funny games every day, youtube.com slash kinda funny games every day, roosterteeth.com every day. Uh, podcast services around the globe each and every day. Remember, we put up a new episode of We Have Cool Friends this week with Brian W. Foster from Critical Role. It is incredibly touching and deep. We'd love for you to go give that show a try. YouTube.com slash kinda funny podcast services is almost around the globe. Spotify is working on it from what I understand, but they suck. They don't suck. You know what I mean? Spotify's great. They hey, they're suck. great to us. Whoa! Until next time. Oh, wait. Andrea, where can people find you? We should promote your stuff. You, know you can what I mean? find What's Good Games everywhere you find Kind of Funny Games Daily. Just make sure you hit that subscribe button when you yeah. subscribe to Games Daily, and then you've got two different options for great content. There you go. Until next time, when Andrea and I are back, it's been our pleasure to serve you. <laughs>